Representative Noyce, thank you for making this work. Who you're going to be talking to, the, the recording this now on Saturday, is there's 1,300 people on the way to D.C. right now. So okay. we're going to have our annual conference and try to see everybody in the House and Senate again. We're close to about 500 confirmed appointments right now. Okay. Uh, there'll be another whole bunch of people who weren't able to make the trip but helped raise money for other people to come. They um, helped get the appointments secured. And then there'll be thousands of people who will be listening to the recording in between months. So uh, what, we, yeah, what we were hoping is, is to get some of your comments on the Climate Solutions Caucus. And, you know, initially your thoughts of, you know, what your aspirations are for it. Uh, how big do you think it can, it can get? What do you think it can do in the short and long term? So if you wouldn't mind starting there, and then I have a few follow-up questions if you don't mind. Thanks so much for, for asking me to participate, and I'm sorry that I can't be there in person. Uh, it's, the, the Climate Solutions Caucus is growing, and it's growing rapidly, and it's growing rapidly because of, of the people who are uh, participating uh, in Washington and the people all around the country who have helped. We are now uh, up to 42 members. Uh, that's 21 Republicans and 21 Democrats who, uh, who come together to focus on climate change, ways to address climate change, mitigation, resiliency, uh, ways to curb emissions, and all of this at a vitally important moment when uh, members, more and more members of Congress understand what's at stake uh, while, unfortunately, the administration made a decision uh, to move in an opposite direction, what we're doing now is more important than ever. Great. And, and how big do you think this caucus can grow and what kind of influence can yield? And then would you mind also saying, do you think there's a chance that this bleeds over to other issues? Is it possible that there's bipartisanship happening here that that perhaps could foster bipartisanship uh, in a greater Congress? Uh, well, how big can this caucus grow? Uh, there is, I, I like to say that, uh, that there's, there's, uh, there's really no limit. Uh, but unfortunately, there are some number of, of members who, uh, who don't think this is a serious issue and who don't believe that we should be working hard to address it. Uh, I can't do anything about them, but I do know that as more and more members of Congress hear from activists around the country, like so many activists who have come to Washington to, to go talk to their members of Congress, uh, there's going to be more pressure on them to join. Uh, so hopefully that, uh, th that will cause the numbers to grow. And this really is, I think, a good model uh, for the way things should work in Congress. There are, uh, there are big issues that we have to tackle uh, that will only get resolved if we work in a bipartisan way. And given the way things are currently in Washington, just having the opportunity to come to sit around a table to have a, a meaningful and constructive conversation uh, is something that unfortunately is all too rare. It's happening in the Climate Solutions Caucus. And when we move forward and we have the opportunity to, to show the, the ability to actually pass legislation and, and make this an important part of the national debate, uh, then hopefully that we can do the same thing in other areas as well. And when do you anticipate that we'll start seeing uh, legislation and, and how aggressive do you think there will be bills coming out of the caucus in terms of the, how ambitious they are? Um, well, I, look, I know some of us on the, on the caucus are very ambitious and would like to move mm -hmm. forward quickly. There's legislation and there are bills that have been introduced, not as, as caucus bills, but bills that we hope the caucus will support uh, that focus on mitigation and the creation of uh, a, uh, a fund to, to fund mitigation projects around the country that will also allow us to move forward with resiliency um, uh, efforts around the country. Likewise, there is a, a bipartisan bill to create a, a, a climate um, commission that will bring in experts that will again make recommendations on, on policies that an administration can adopt. Uh, those, I think, those are things that, that can all move forward, but there's more than that. Uh, we're looking for ways to, uh, there are bills to, to curb emissions, both CO2 emissions and uh, methane emissions. There is legislation that will change the way agriculture is done so that we can encourage uh, the agriculture uh, industry to, to move forward in a way that will both be more beneficial to their crops and their crop yield, but will also help to uh, reduce uh, global warming. 
that's the kind of thing that we ought to be doing. Uh, and then finally, the one area that we don't talk enough about is the ways to work with our military leaders uh, and provide mm -hmm. them with the tools that they need uh, to combat climate change. It's something that they're focused on on their bases, and it's something that they understand we have to do because uh, if we're not serious about fighting climate change, it will only mean that around the globe it will it will put more uh, communities at risk and will likely lead to greater conflict and, and a, a higher severity of conflicts around the world. So we ought to be working with the military as well and, that, and our national defense experts, and, and that's something else where I think there's there's broad support in the caucus. Great. Um, one of the questions that was uh, set to me by quite a few people is um, oftentimes our volunteers are frustrated because when they meet in Democratic offices, the Democrats are so discouraged about the possibility of getting anything done. And they were asking, what, you know, what can you tell us about how to approach particularly the Democratic offices that are discouraged uh, to try and encourage them that something can get done? Well, I, I understand. I mean, I, I'm an optimist, and I don't think that you can really do this job either as a member of Congress or as an activist if you weren't optimistic about the chances for success. Um, that said, it, it's challenging when the President of the United States gives a speech uh, full of all kinds of uh, outrageous statements that, that uh, aren't, aren't actually supported by the facts about climate change and, uh, and in support of his uh, really unfortunate decision to withdraw from Paris, uh, I can understand the frustration. That said, this is an issue that the American people understand. Overwhelmingly, there is opposition to the president's decision to withdraw from Paris, uh, the Paris Agreement. And so they should, they should actually know going in to talk to members of Congress that there is an opportunity to build upon the, the disappointment that people feel, the anger that people felt when the president ceded leadership on this issue. The, the, the talking point was that the president ceded leadership to China. That may be true in the context of this agreement, the Paris Agreement. It is not at all true in Washington. In Washington, leadership is now in the hands of Congress, which really means that leadership is in the hands of your activists who are here to talk to their members of Congress. They should feel empowered by what they've seen and not let the frustration get to them. Instead, view it as an opportunity to really stand up and to, to advocate for positions that are overwhelmingly supported by the American people. Great. And that, that, that really leads me to one of the other areas people ask me a lot, which is, what else can we do to help to build a caucus? I mean, our, our volunteers are so committed to growing this as fast as we possibly can. Is there anything that we might not be thinking about? Uh, that you or approaches to growing it that would help the caucus continue to grow at the really remarkable rate it has been growing? Well, it's a great question. You're, uh, you're actually doing a great job. And uh, <laughs> first, of all, you need, first of all, you need to keep it up. You need to keep writing those letters to the editor. They matter. People see them. They, they read them. Uh, they pop up on people's uh, Google alerts. <laughs> and that's, that makes a difference. So keep writing the letters, keep reaching out to the offices, keep, go, keep uh, meeting with members of Congress. Um, it's important when you're in Washington, uh, but when you do programs at home, uh, you can go to meet the members of Congress to talk about these issues. But when there are other programs, I know that, that the activists down in South Florida have, have been really uh, busy doing programming around town, invite your members of Congress, invite their staffs uh, to come see the work that you're doing, to see how energized you are, uh, that matters. And finally, you have to take advantage of social media. Uh, everyone, uh, I mean, I, it's, it's embarrassing to say, but we all, we all check our, our Twitter accounts and Instagram and Facebook. And, and when you're out there posting about these issues and tagging your members of Congress and talking about how important it is, to you that they care about these issues, you will get their attention and you will increase the likelihood that, uh, that they're going to participate. So stay at it. It's, um, uh, it's hard work, but it's hard work because there's so many ways for you to, to do it. And, uh, and if you stay at it, your impact uh, will only, will only uh, magnify. Great. Is there anything else that you'd like to tell our people? Again, we're going to have uh, 1,300 people on Capitol Hill uh, next Tuesday. 
Uh, we'll be working with ourselves on Sunday and Monday to get ready for that. There's thousands more people back home in the district who, as you pointed out, you know, we're running a clip of about 3,000 letters to the editor this year, probably about five or 600 op-eds, and, and really, astonishingly, we'll probably get 100 editorial endorsements from newspapers this year. Uh, so is there anything else that you would like to um, share with those people that are out there doing that? Uh, no, I, I'd just like to thank them, and, and thank you for what you're doing. There are, uh, there are so many tools at your disposal to, uh, to further our shared goal of getting people to come together in Congress to tackle the issue of climate change. Uh, we have meetings in the Climate Solutions Caucus where, where we give business leaders and uh, energy companies and military leaders and government officials the opportunity to come talk about the cost, that, uh, the cost of carbon on, our, on their businesses, uh, on our economy and on the world. Uh, you have so many opportunities to do the same thing at home. And I just want to thank you for what you're doing and encourage you to keep doing it. Stay at the social media. Keep writing letters to the editor. Talk to your neighbors about it. Uh, there aren't a lot of issues right now that have broad bipartisan support. So let's work together to advance this issue that we all care about and to show those people who think that, that Congress can't work together, that when it comes to an issue this important that affects the future of our planet, that indeed we can come together and uh, in fact, we, we really must. So thanks for all that you do. And thanks for letting me spend some time with you. Thank you so much, uh, Representative Deutsch. Uh, we loved having you at our reception last year um, and uh, loved having you be able to get out to all of our membership uh, by this Saturday's call. Thank you so much.